Hello everybody, this is Mr. Onesto again, and we're about to start a new lesson. Under the Sea, Crayon Resist Part 1. Like a lot of these lessons, um, I've forgotten where I've got them from. Some of them um, I uh, created myself based on other lessons I've come across. Now this one, I got many, many years ago, probably 25 years ago, from an art teacher named Jim Vicinius from Sergeant Bluff, Luton, Iowa. And uh, he was a great and wonderful art teacher and he's influenced me a lot. And uh, hopefully there's been art teachers to you that have influenced you. Uh, this lesson is one I've done when I used to teach elementary school, um, but it can be done at all levels and it doesn't have to deal with C pictures. And I'm sure this lesson started from when the Little Mermaid came out. So that's how old this lesson is, but it's a very good one. And I recommend that if you don't know a lot about ocean life, uh, look at other YouTube videos about life under the ocean. They're very fascinating and you can add them to your artwork. Uh, as I said, this is a crane resist. And when I talk about all levels, um, you can see you can make something very complex and exciting and uh so let me just tell you what we're going to need for this under the sea picture let me move this out of the way we of course are going to need a drawing paper um i something thicker even a low quality watercolor paper would be good for this picture if you have a sketchbook you can remove a page out of your sketchbook you probably don't want to do this one in the sketchbook itself. You're going to need a pencil. You're going to need an eraser. Now, one of the erasers I always use is a kneaded eraser. That's one of these stretchy erasers. This one's getting kind of old. Um, and they do come in colors. You are going to need waxy crayons, a watercolor set, and watercolor paint brushes. Um, if you have bigger watercolor paint brushes, that will be better for this one. It's okay if you have to use a small one. It is what it is. You have what you have. Um, watercolor can be uh, substituted if you happen to have food dye in your pantry. Um, just water it down pretty good. Um, so I'm going to move all this aside. And if you look at the first drawing I did, I went tall ways with it vertical and you don't have to do that you can go horizontal with your paper um, so when we get this started the first thing I always think about is the seabed and I'm drawing the sea bottom and I want you to notice that I'm not just drawing a straight line I don't know what I'm going to do. I might just do a nice little rock here like I did in the other one and put a hole in it. Or it could be a cave. It could be part of the coral reef. We could draw a piece of coral. I'm not worried about these overlines. One of the big parts of this project is going to be uh, overlapping. So there are going to be lines we want to erase. And you should never be embarrassed about erasing. Uh, erasing is part of drawing. Uh, don't obsess over your mistakes. And because um, uh, I, I know a lot of students I've had in the past uh, they would be paranoid because some uh, art teacher or some teacher um, will get on them for erasing. It, it One, it's okay to make mistakes, but two, you just have to, when you overlap, this is part of drawing. This is one part of drawing. I will do other videos on how we draw with the eraser. And I'm just starting my C bottom. We might want to do a starfish. We might want to make some shells, some snails. I'm going to put the snail on the side here. Now you do sea slugs if you want. Ah, I'm not going to. I want to make sure everything's thick enough for me to draw. 
Now, um, I'm going to leave this for the moment, and I'm going to draw some mermaids. And I'm just going to do some lines of where I'm going to put them. Very basic mermaids. And for the first one, I'm just going to use a rectangle shape. And then I'm going to do a tail. Teardrop. Teardrop. And I got a mermaid tail. And using the rectangle shapes, I'm going to draw arms. You want to double line everything you do with the cranberries. It's a lot easier to color a double line than it is just the line. Okay, and notice how I'm doing my fingers. They're not perfect, and they count to four or five. I did that because I want you guys to understand that it's okay if you don't know how to draw hands. Don't hide your hands. The only way you're going to learn to draw hands is by doing them. And I'm going to do the seashell. I'm going to just erase my center line now. And I'm going to draw the head. Now, you'll, I probably have some students on here who's going, hey, he always says draw the head first. And I'm going to do a circle, and I'm going to add a U at the very bottom of the circle. And I erase this. Look at that. I got the start of a mermaid. Um, let's do some eyes, and I'm going to make them nice and big. Nice and big eyes. So you can see them. The eyebrows. We always forget eyebrows. A nose and a smile. Uh, a nice big smile. That's a scary looking face there. I'll work on that. And do some hair. How's that? Let's, let's remove the scary face though. Even Mr. O makes mistakes. And I'm going to just start with the smi maybe the smile first. Laughter. And do a button nose. There we go. That looks like somebody who's having a good time. Not somebody who is scared of something. Now over here, I'm going to do my shapes a little different. I'm going to use an oval. And because there's no one way of doing anything. And I'm going to do a teardrop. Reverse teardrop is what I'm doing. And I get my mermaid um, uh, tail. I got my body. And I'm going to do more of a circular shape for my arms. And if you want to do a closed hand, now that's almost like a circle there, square circle. But once again, I'm not going to be afraid of fingers. I'm not worrying about being perfect. And you can go around and erase your extra lines. And I'm going to put a shirt on. You know, we don't know what they wear down under the sea. I've never really seen a mermaid. I mean, we've seen the cartoons, but, you know, sometimes, um, you know, you get the get milk shirt. We got get wet. You know, is water wet? That's the question. Are you going to answer that question? I'm going to do just an oval for the head. And once again, nice big eyes. Big smiley face. A little bit of an, a little hook for the nose. I'm going to add some ears here. I'm going to do the hair short. And you know what? I'm going to make the hair curly. And I'm not going to color in the hair. Not with my pencil anyway. And I'm just going to erase the top of the head. And there we go. Now you could draw some scales if you want. I wouldn't draw too many. Because we'll do that in crayons, and I'll talk about that later. Now, I need to draw some things um, out here. And not having any references in front of me, I'm just going to use memory. And uh, let's see. Let's see if you do something, a whale. We'll do an orca whale. And I got my overlapping, right? Can you see how I'm overlapping? That makes pictures more exciting. Now... Being very careful with my orca whale because they have the flat tails. Whales and dolphins, they have flat tails. And I'm going to do my eye, do a circle around the eye, and I think around the belly. That's 
that's starting to look like an orca, guys. I hope so. I do a little C for the blowhole, and orcas do have little sharp teeth, even if they're smiling. Um, and do some fish. Now watch this. I'm going to do what looks like the start of a teardrop with it out being finished. And I'll do a triangle. Don't worry about being perfect. Do some fins. Look like little Mohawks. Put some smiles. Who wouldn't want to live under the sea? Probably somebody who doesn't want, who can't breathe in water. They don't want to live under the sea. And little curved triangles. How's that going so far? And for you, you can keep drawing and drawing different things you want under the sea. Um, and don't forget about the things that crawl on the bottom, whether it's an octopus. Um, we got, like I said, uh, sea slugs. Um, but there are other kinds of starfish, other kinds of tentacle-type creatures. There's fish, flounders that live in the sand, and you can draw that. When you have that done, click to the second video. And for those of you who are looking for more advance, you can take a look at this picture, and you can see I overlapped. I, I put a, 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 a spear staff in her hand. I made her hair more curly. I put like crab armor um, on them. I added extra fins, um, and you can do that. I added a giant crab uh, monster in the background there. Um, so get that drawn. When you have your picture fully drawn out, remember, try not to color with a pencil. And don't worry if you draw too hard. Try to draw lightly, but don't worry if you cannot. Uh, I know people obsess with that. We'll talk about pencils and, and how to draw light and and not to be so dark or how, how to shade versus coloring with a pencil uh, in other videos. But guys, this is the important thing, um, especially if you're home alone right now. You're important and you're not alone and you're loved. So we'll just talk to you later. See you next time. Bye-bye.